Yeah, I'm Sherry Green Array. Um, we'll do a little bit here. Um, I'm the studio design director at Shell Games. Shell Games is headquartered in Pittsburgh. I'm located here in Austin and I work remotely. I started in the game industry in 1989 at Origin Systems. I started as a writer because there was no designer uh, title at the time. I started as a writer for that company, later on moving into the design, but pretty much doing design all, all the time. I'm the author of Gender Inclusive Game Design, Expanding the Market. I am the co-founder of Women in Games International. I also uh, co-founded the IGDA's Women in Game Dev uh, SIG, and uh, I was the uh, admin of their mailing list for about 10 years. And I'm a hardcore gamer. I'm probably at least a 20 to 30 hour a week gamer, so that's, that's my credentials. This is a little bit of an unusual talk for me. Um, the, when, when John told me he was doing a segment on time, this is something that I've been thinking about and chewing on for a while, and, and this is a, something I don't necessarily have answers for, but this is a problem and a situation that I've been chewing on, particularly as it pertains to design. So this is what we're going to talk about. So I'm not going to have a, a set answer for this situation. This is kind of the parameters of the problem that we're dealing with in design today. So in the beginning, as I said, when I started in the industry, there was no title of designer. There were writers. But we all started the same way in design. We started off with this really, really wonderful idea, this wonderful gr grand view. And our job as the writers and designers was to take that grand idea and to turn it into the coolest game ever. So that's what we did. We took these great grand ideas and we hammered on them and we turned them into the coolest game ever. And we worked on these sometimes for years to get these games out. And then the coolest game ever was put on a shelf in a store somewhere and we all crossed our fingers and really, really hoped that it sold thousands of units and everybody would make money because if it didn't, we often lost the company or lost our jobs. So that was the way it worked back when I started in the industry. Now we fast forward to today and we've got a very different business model today. Today, we make the, still do the same thing, we come up with a great idea, we make the coolest game ever, but instead of going onto the shelves, what happens now is our games are supposed to go onto the internet and they're supposed to be downloadable. But the key is, they're also supposed to be free to play, particularly if you're dealing in a social game space. These games are supposed to be free to play and they're supposed to be microtransaction based to try to make some money that way, but at their core they're a free to play game. This is a really different thing. In fact, what this is is a paradigm shift. Why is this a paradigm shift? Now I'm going to talk particularly about the microtransaction style versus subscription-based MMOs and kind of how we've seen some of the differences that we've seen in these things. Traditionally, when we were building subscription-based MMO titles, these big MMOs, um, I worked on Star Wars Galaxies um, and a couple of others. The, we were building, again, this great beautiful dream, these wonderful games that we're going to put out to make the really the greatest and the best experience ever. Now, the interesting thing about this is for our player, our players paid for this by subscription. They had an amount of money that they paid every month, and that it just came, it was automatic withdrawal from their account or their credit card, and that's how they, they paid for it. So for them to stop paying us, we had to do something really bad. I mean, we had to do something really egregiously bad for them to say, okay, that's it, I stop. And they would go to the, find their account, to the website, find the account, figure out how to stop it and stop the pay to make sure they stop paying. So basically, what we're saying is the natural state of the subscription MMO is to pay. That's the natural state. And the player has to take steps to stop this. So now we change to today. Now we've got all these free to plays, all the microtransaction based things. This is very different because the natural state for the free-to-play game is to not pay. So, in other words, as a designer, I have to do something so exciting and so thrilling every single time you log in that you push the pay button. This is a very different mindset for how we design these kinds of games. We have to design the games to make them really exciting, to make them really where they want to pay us every single time they log in. And usually this is done in these various ways. You know, we make leveling up really easy, we make leveling up exciting, collect all these great things, all these really wonderful things that we use to try to get people to continue to put that pay button and to take the initiative to pay us every time. Problem with this is we kind of end up with this overload. You know, I mean, we all get tired of being spammed on Facebook. You know, here's your lost cow. Oh my God, the 15th one I've had this hour. I don't need another lost cow. So we overload people with this stuff. And this is where we get down to the whole problem. Because this is, as we're seeing is happening, the public is finally beginning to get overloaded with this and we're tired of lost cows and we're tired of how the friends, we're tired of all of this stuff. It's not working. And I was wondering is why? 
So it's easy for us to say that business model doesn't work, abandon it. I don't think that's necessarily what we do. I think what we need to do is we need to take a look at it and figure out why it's not working and what's going on. And I really think it comes down to time. There's kind of an old adage in game design. Time is the most val valuable currency that your player has. You, as the designer, have to spend it wisely. And this is where, this is one of the things we're messing up in when we're doing these social games. Because we kind of have this, this conflict going of time versus virality. You know, we say, you know, bring your friends in and, you know, go to your friends' farms and, you know, here's the lost cow and all that stuff. And we think that's going to be viral. And what we've got is we've got a conflict between time and virality. How does that work? Okay. So if you're a game player, you have a certain amount of time that you dedicate to playing your game every day. So say this box is the amount of time you have. I have this amount of time to play my game. So when you start playing a game, this is really cool. Look, I build something. It fits right in my time box. How cool is that? Oh, that was fun. OK, hey, I built something else. That was kind of fun too. OK, now, hey, I built something that produces stuff for the things I've built. That's kind of fun. I'm having a good time. Now, oh, uh, I'm supposed to invite friends. OK, I've got time. I can do that, too. So I start inviting my friends. That's, that's pretty nice. Oh, uh, I'm supposed to get more friends. Oh, OK, I can do that. I've still got some time in my time box. OK, invite friends and build some things and take care of my things that produce income so I can continue and, and I invite more friends. Yeah, I can do that. Wait, I got to invite more friends. I got to go visit those friends. Oh, OK, so I got this. And now I've invited them. And now I've got to go visit them. Now I've got to take care of my stuff. And yeah, we're starting to get a little squished on time here. What? More friends and more people I have to visit. I don't have a whole lot of time left here. And, and all of a sudden, most of my time is being spent doing things that really aren't the fun things I came to the game for. Wait, more stuff? Now I have to go do more things before I can get to the fun stuff? Well, now I'm going to start giving up some of the fun things that I wanted to do, or I have to figure out how to make my time box bigger. And if I make my time box bigger, well, as designers, we continue to ask them to fill it with other things that aren't necessarily the fun thing they came to the game to do. And we push and we push and we push this until finally the player just doesn't have any more time in that time box. They're out of time. And they fail. Because all of a sudden, they don't have enough time to keep up with the farm and the friends and the people and the going and the doing. And I don't have time to, I'm no longer doing anything that's the fun part of my time. I'm only doing the, the maintenance part. And even I can't keep up with that. And I fail. And so what happens when our players fail? We start getting stuff like this. There's 200,000 people on this page alone that say they hate Farmville. 200,000 people can keep a small MMO alive forever. And this game has pissed them off bad enough that they're willing to come out and say they hate it. So what happens when we cause our players to fail because we push their time box, they don't just quit our game. They divorce our game. It's a divorce, really. And because it's this emotional, you caused me to fail. All I wanted to do was come here and build these little houses and have a good time but you pushed me to fail. This isn't good design, guys. We've got to think about this, because what we're doing is we are wasting our players' time. And again, that's the most valuable currency they have. So when we do this, and this is where I said I don't really have answers for the situation. I don't really know yet what we can do about this. But I think what we do is we begin to identify and realize what this time box is and what we're doing with this time box. We can begin to solve some of these problems that we've been seeing in the social game world. And we can begin to stop causing our players to fail, because that's not fun. We don't want players to fail. So we have to understand how the player's time is being used. We really have to understand that. We have to look at what they're doing, understand if what they're doing is fun, and understand how much of their time we're asking them to do things that really may not be the fun part of the game that they originally came to the game to do. We also need to develop ways that they use that time to not fail. That's the biggest problem that we're doing with these things, is we're, we're pushing our players to fail. So that's what I've got. Like I said, I don't have any answers for this situation, but it's just something I want you guys to start thinking about when you're designing, is looking at how you're spending your players' time. This is my information. I'm happy to talk to anybody about any of this stuff, and thank you very much.